What's going on, big dogs? Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Nick here. Big dogs got to eat fantasy football. Coming back at you with another team outlook. We wiped out the entire NFC East. You can go find any of those in my previous videos. And now we're moving from Biggie to Pac, from East to West Coast. Comment down below who your favorite rapper is, actually, now that we're starting this off. Biggie versus Pac, before we even get started. So the first team we're getting into in the NFC West, the Arizona Cardinals. And before we get started, I want to say thank you to our sponsor. Actually, no, I had some heartbreaking news. I actually reached out to Monster. I said, listen, y'all need to sponsor me because I'm an up and coming fantasy football channel. It's a perfect market for you to get into, yada, yada, yada. I gave them the pitch. They emailed me back. They said, sorry, Nick. That's not in our core values. We do extreme sports, we do skateboarding, surfing, and a couple other things, so we don't wanna stray away from our, our key values. I guess I'll never be getting a monster sponsorship. <sighs> it's really hard for me to say on camera for the first time, but we're gonna move on. I'll keep drinking them. I'll keep shouting them out. NFC West, Arizona Cardinals. <sighs> All right, so the Cardinals, pretty big down year last year. Seven wins, eight losses, and a tie. I don't know if you guys heard, but the NFL is actually moving the overtime rules. They're changing the time rules in overtime to 10 minutes instead of 15 for player safety. But let's keep those Monday night doubleheaders. Let's keep those Thursday night games, those London games, those Monday night games. Let's keep all those intact. But as long as we cut down five minutes in OT, everybody's safe. Mwah. You got to start off with Carson Palmer, obviously, at quarterback. They weren't really sure if he was even going to come back this year. He decided to stay another year, at least one more year. We'll see where that takes us after the season. A pretty major drop-off from his 2015 season to 2016, especially in terms of efficiency. So he actually threw the ball 60 more times in, 20, in 2016 than he did in 2015. But he threw for 434 less yards and nine less passing touchdowns. Not good for all y'all that are not good at math. So you're like, what happened to Palmer? I don't think anything happened to Palmer. I think those numbers that he put up last year were pretty much equivalent to about every other year he's had in his career, except for 2015, which was his career number year. That's why people were so high on him. The 2015 season set a standard for him that was never there in the 12 years prior to that. So I think that kind of escalated his ranking and his his projection for last year. And it was kind of, it was, it was wrong in a sense. But when you look at the numbers last year, 4,237 passing yards, tied for ninth in the NFL, 26 passing touchdowns, top 10, quarterback 13, fantasy finish. Nothing to scoff at, but his efficiency was not good when you look under the hood. He averaged 0.39 fantasy points per drop back, tied him, tied him with, let me see, Blaine Gabbert and Blake Bortles. He posted the lowest completion percentage of his career since 2011, 61%. So we're trying to piece the puzzles together. What happened? Was it just an outlier of a year in 2015, or, or did he take a step back? I think one, uh, we look at the Michael Floyd situation. You know, he performed really well in 2015 while he was there, and then he disappeared. Physically, literally, he was terrible when he played, and then obviously he got moved. Another piece of that, of, of that puzzle was the offensive line play. Not a good year. They went from, I think, the fifth ranked offensive line in 2015 to the 21st in 2016. So a big step back there. A lot harder to play under pressure, obviously, for Palmer. So as I was saying, the volume was up. The efficiency was down. The Cardinals ranked sixth in terms of heaviest passing offense. Over 63% of their plays were passes. Uh, it's very likely that we see a regression in that number because David Johnson's taking over as a workhorse in the backfield there. He's going to see 20 to 25 carries a game. You know, as bad as these efficiency numbers were for Palmer, when you look even deeper under the hood, there is positive. There is a silver lining. Uh, a lot of his, his bad play came in a four-game span. There was a game against Buffalo that he threw four interceptions. And that four game span, he threw six total interceptions, makes all the statistics look very bad. Obviously a fourth of the season is, is, a, is a big chunk of the season, so you can't just take that for granted. But he bounced back pretty heavily. Over the final five games of the season, he had a 10 to three touchdown interception ratio, and he was throwing for 260 yards a game. Uh, Pro Football Focus, actually, this is an interesting stat. PFF gave Palmer the fourth best quarterback rating from weeks eight through 17. He was only behind Rodgers, Matt Ryan, and Brady. So that's definitely an upside. He played well down the stretch. Doesn't always equate to fantasy numbers, obviously the way they rate the players on PFF, but it's good to see nonetheless. 
So in 14 of the 15 games Palmer played, he threw for at least 280 yards or multiple touchdowns. Consistency was there, not huge ceiling, but the consistency nonetheless. Right now, Palmer's going off the board at QB 20. Obviously, that's a value given the offense and given the weapons around him. That being said, I'm not taking him in my 10 or 12 team league. He's a backup quarterback for now until he proves he could do something. I mean, I'm not going to hate streaming him against bad quarter, uh, bad defenses next year, so it's not... Um, it's not a huge issue if you wait like way too late and get Palmer as your quarterback, but I definitely don't suggest having him as a starter. He's borderline in 14-team uh, leagues. Not a bad pick for two QB leagues as well. So we move over to the wide receivers. Now, this is a really interesting category for the Cardinals offense. You know, it was business as usual for Fitz in 2016. It's come to the point where he's the undeniable focal point of that offense, and he's just getting disrespected in fantasy circles. Over the last two years, these are his averages. 149 targets, 109 receptions, 1,122 receiving yards, and seven and a half touchdowns per season. He gives you a floor, in, especially in PPR, that you cannot get from 99% of other fantasy wide receivers. Here's the problem I have with where he's getting picked. He's going 42nd overall, wide receiver 23. He finished last season as PPR's wide receiver 11. Season before that, PPR wide receiver 7. Now you have Michael Floyd gone. They kind of have an unproven receiving corps. He's going to, again, be the guy there in Arizona. Even if he doesn't score a ton of touchdowns, he's going to get another 150 targets, 105 to 115 receptions. He's like, it's a gorgeous floor. And if he's available in the fifth round of all of my drafts, I'll take him there every single time. And I'll probably be reaching into the fourth round to take him. He's a super safe receiver. So when you start looking past Fitz, that's where, you know, the water gets a little murkier. You have the John Browns the J.J. Nelsons, the Jaron Browns, and then the rookie Chad Williams. We'll start on John Brown, obviously played with that sickle cell issue last season, which forced him to miss a ton of games, and he was not effective at all when he did play. It was supposed to be a big breakout season for him, or a lot of people assumed it would be the breakout season for him, uh, and now that's kind of trickled over into this year. They're saying he's fully healthy. All the doctors have said he's fully healthy. He also dealt with hamstring injuries last year when he tried to return and throughout the offseason, and now... Uh, the, ham, the hammy issue has kind of arisen again. Which is definitely a concern for a wide receiver. Hammies are never a good thing, but it's something to keep an eye on. Obviously, there's a lot of time between now and the start of the season, but just remember that as a risk factor. Brown is a monster talent. He's a small guy, but he's really good hands, really big playmaker, can, can catch the deep balls. Him and Palmer had a really nice uh, connection in 2015 on the deep balls. They missed a bunch of big plays that could have, you know, elevated Brown into like a top 15 fantasy wide receiver. And now the two, uh, Palmer and Brown, interestingly enough, interestingly enough, are staying together this offseason. They're living together to kind of build up chemistry. They did it last season. Obviously, it didn't work out because of the injuries, but that's a good sign for the two. Now, I see Brown as, as the clear-cut number two right now in that offense. I think he's a wide receiver three slash wide receiver four with big game upside. Uh, I'm not going to label him as an every week wide receiver two. I don't really see that upside. Um, but if you finish inside the top 30 or the top 36, definitely wouldn't surprise me. Right now, he's being picked 102nd overall as wide receiver 45, so there's very minimal risk in terms of the upside that he provides there. So when you look past that, you got Andre Ellington. I don't know what the fuck he's doing. He's moved from running back to receiver. Now he's moved back from wide receiver to running back. When I started writing this article, the blog post, he was a wide receiver. And then I updated it yesterday because I knew I was going to make this video. Now I move back to running back. He's going to be like RB4 on that team. So I, not, nothing there. I already spent too much time talking about him. There are two guys behind Fitz and John Brown that I do really like and should battle for some pretty good targets this year. First being J.J. Nelson. He put together a nice season last year. He racked up 650 total yards, seven scores, and he finished the year on an absolute tear. He scored five times in the Cardinals' last five games. It's not a bad ratio. And guess what? Over those last five games, he was wide receiver number two in fantasy, standard leagues, only behind Jordy Nelson. It's hard to ignore that type of production, obviously, but I think it just tells you he's a playmaker. He has a nose for the end zone. It's also hard to tell how much time he's going to get if John Brown is fully healthy and returns to the lineup. They have a very similar skill set. They're pretty similar in size, so they're, so they're almost, I don't want to say they're redundant, but... Um, but they're redundant. So it's hard to see how much time he's gonna get in there. It, it is worth noting he's two years younger than John Brown, so maybe they wanna give him a test this year, who knows. 
And then you have the rookie, Chad Williams. I'm gonna read what I uh, kind of wrote down for him. He's out of Grambling State, small school product. He was the 98th overall pick in the draft this year. Really good mix of athleticism and production entering the NFL. He's 6'1", 207, so he's got good, good size for the outside. That's something that the, no Cardinals receiver really has on the roster right now, or that they've used. Uh, they have Fitz, obviously, in the slot. They have John Brown, J.J. Nelson, both really small guys, so Chad Williams could be that big guy for them. Second team All-American, caught 90 balls, 1,337 yards, and 11 scores in the Southwestern Athletic Conference, the SAC. It's pretty good in the SAC. <laughs> Uh, so he impressed at his pro day. He ran a 4-4-3-40, really good for that size. He had some off-the-field issues, which definitely brought him down in the draft, but that don't affect fantasy football. And there was a report that came out last week, Fitzgerald complimenting Chad Williams, saying that he has really, really strong hands. Reminds him a lot of Anquan Bolden. Big, big compliment there. He says the ball hits him in the hands and it doesn't even move. So you got to like a guy that catches with his hands, has really good speed, really good size, athleticism. So there's a lot of opportunity in this offense for a guy like Chad Williams to step in and make his mark. If not for this year, definitely someone to keep an eye out and keeper in dynasty leagues because remember, Fitz, this is probably Fitz's last year and they don't really have a true number one behind him. So Chad Williams is a guy, I know my draft we do 10th round or later, you can keep the following year. So Chad Williams is a guy I'm definitely gonna keep an eye on for. And then you have Jaron Brown. I wrote something on him about how, you know, on ESPN when you when the name pops up, like Jay Brown scores a 70-yard touchdown, you're like, oh, let's go. I got John Brown in my lineup, double day, we dabbing all day. Turns out to be Jaron Brown, and you're like, shit. Towards ACL, missed most of last season. Decent depth. That's about all he provides for the Cardinals, nothing fantasy wise in my opinion. And you move over to the tight end position in Arizona, you have Jermaine Gresham. Signed a four year, $28 million deal through 2020. Gresham is a really shitty blocker. He's never gone over 460 receiving yards in his five NFL seasons. He's got three touchdowns over his last two years combined. And he finished last season as tight end 32 in fantasy. So I'm not really sure what the Cardinals are doing and I'm not really sure what you're doing still listening to me talking about Jermaine Gresham. So we'll move along. Not that I really need to because the next guy up is David Johnson. Consensus top two picked. Uh, he's actually the number one player off the board right now. Not number one off my board. I'm going Le'Veon Bell just because I believe in their offense a little more and I believe in their offensive line. But David Johnson, I'm not going to argue with you if you're going to take him one over Bell. 2,100 yards last year, 20 touchdowns. He's literally like having an RB1 in your lineup plus a wide receiver two or three because he has games where he'll catch eight balls for 80 yards. It's like unbelievable. That's all I have to say about him. If you're looking for like a, a handcuff, a dude, Kerwin Williams. He's 25 years old. He'll be entering his fourth year in the league. He's built kind of like Andre Ellington, so he's kind of a scat back. Don't really see him as a real handcuff. If, if David Johnson goes down, they're going to be using probably a committee. He does have a, a career 5.56 yards per carry. Scored twice in the Cardinals' last three games in 2016. So riding a little hot streak, definitely a good spot in the coaches' minds. I'm not in favor of doing handcuffs. It's not. I don't do that when I'm drafting. And if you're a David Johnson or maybe you're in a deep ass league, like 20 rounds, 24 rounds, something like that, or or, eight, or like 16, 18 teams, Kerwin Williams is probably your best bet to be a handcuff in that Cardinals offense. And that's gonna wrap up the Cardinals outlook. I uh, hope y'all enjoyed. If you did, please just scroll down a little bit, give the video a thumbs up. I appreciate it. Share the video. We're trying to get some new subs on here. Subscribe to the channel, obviously, if you're new and you enjoy it. We're going to be coming at you with all 32 teams' outlooks, as well as other videos on top busts, top sleepers, position by position, my rankings, live mock drafts, all that kind of good shit. So definitely stay tuned and subscribe if you enjoyed. Also, if you need any gear for your league, I have an affiliate link down below to fantasyjocks.com. A lot of you guys are watching this on mobile, I'm assuming. So if you can't see the description, it's literally the first thing right below the video. And it's like right here and you got to click a little arrow to, to let everything kind of pop off. And that's where you can see everything. But I have my Fantasy Jocks affiliate link. They do draft board kits for live draft, championship belts, trophies, rings, all really cool shit. So if you need any of that, go through there, please. You know, follow us on Twitter, subscribe to the blog. Everything is linked in the description. And thank you for spending your time with me again today. I appreciate you. I love you. You loyal. You loyal. And we'll be back for another one in a couple days. Peace out, big dog country. I'ma learn you. You ready? Luda. Let me tell you about these old school Chevys. Cadillacs, SS, Impalas. If you smoking, then we got more sacks than Troy Palomalu. Yo, partners want some totals. My partners want some keys. In Atlanta, we get that paper. Can you hate us? Say cheese. 10,000 watts.